higher or probably higher? Higher? Uh -huh. Like how high? That's like right there. Right? Yeah. Today we have something super fun on our agenda. We are going to be processing this moose behind me. We've got a moose hindquarter and a moose shoulder over here. We acquired this moose through the state program. We got really, really lucky and we actually shared this one with our neighbors. And this one, it's not like the last one we got. It wasn't hit by a train. It wasn't hit by a car. It was confiscated from a hunter. We don't know why, but they took it from him. And the good news is we got it like this. It was already butchered and ready to hang up. So it wasn't too much work. This is our first time hanging meat in the new little carport. And this middle beam here, we purposely made it a little bit thicker. So it's about three inches thick, eight inches wide. And we got our pulleys up there and we got our moose meat tied up. We're both really excited about this because moose season has come to an end. And this moose meat has actually been aging for about a week, am I right? Yep. So that's supposed to help it get a little bit more tender, but moose meat is already so delicious. We did put in some time moose hunting, but we just didn't have that much luck. We weren't able to put that much time in this year with everything being kind of late. And you know, you want to get, there's a crunch really at the end of the season where you have to get things done. Yeah, we were really busy around here. We had a lot of gardening to do, a lot of preserving to do. We did go out like on a three or four day moose hunt, saw a bear and that was about it, but it was still a fun trip. And luckily the last day of moose hunting season, our uh, neighbor went and picked up this awesome moose for us. We have a teeny tiny bit of last year's moose left, so this will be a really nice start to our winter food. Yes, and a half a moose is a lot of meat. These animals are huge. These these things weigh probably like about 100 pounds each. Mm -hmm. They're extremely heavy. Maybe over. We did really well on fishing this year, so we got a bunch of fish. We did really well in the garden, so we are going to be eating extremely good this winter. We're going to get started on these. Mm -hmm. Ariel's going to tackle the hind quarter. I'm going to do the front shoulder. Front shoulder is mostly going to be... Uh, for grinding we're gonna do sausage and burger meat and since this has been aging there's kind of like a tough layer on the outside so we're gonna skin that off clean it up get rid of some of the fat and uh, we got a little bucket over there for dog food we'll get going get a package yeah We have quite the variety of knives that we like to use. I'm gonna use this one. This is a Victorinox boning knife. I love that one. We have a Mora knife. This is probably gonna be the one that Arrow used to start off with. This is like a $20 knife. It's a really good knife. We have the little Havilon ones with the uh, removable little razor blades. Those ones work good. And we have a really nice Benchmade knife that we like to use. And we have our skinning knife. This is more for taking the skin off, so I don't know if we'll use this one, but we're gonna get started. I'm working on this front quarter. So that's what I'm taking off, a little thin layer right there. It's kind of hard on the outside. That's where I took it off. Oh, you got some nice, nice tender meat in there. That's gonna be good. That's going in the dog food. Wow, you look fat on his legs, huh? Yeah, fat little sucker. This knife is like crazy sharp right now. Look at this, this little fat. It's a nice little roast, right? Just holding okay? Yeah, it's just making noise. I don't know about you, but I got like, look, can I show you what I got going on? And then you, you keep going and it works like a strip. I don't know, yeah. I just all of a sudden started doing that. Man, it's like skinning an animal, but harder. Wow. So I think I found where this moose was shot. This is the front quarter. This is the left shoulder, I think. Anyways, I got, looks like an entrance room right there. I noticed a little bit of blood in the meat. Then I have a big exit one on the inside. Right there. It smells so good. Yeah, it Right now, get some steak tartare. We just hit its uh, kneecap. That's a good piece of bandit pure meat. I like this more knife. What's that? I like this more knife. Yeah, it's a good knife. 
I like it that you can use it for skinning, although I like your Benchmade better for skinning, and the other one, the Corey Star Fox one, I like those a lot better for uh, sk skinning. But this one, I think, is neat because you can actually bone out. Or you process, you can't really do... It's all-purpose knife. What you're doing right now is actually a lot easier with this knife. That's more like a processing, like when you do the cuts. Well, that's just my opinion. I don't know what it is, but... You didn't find a bullet, did you? No. It's that string. Okay. Yeah. You good? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, you got it. Whoa. Whew, she went down on me. <laughs> piece of mousse there you go I don't know why I went Russian gangster on that but thank you okay and then let's just admire this beauty oh okay. my gosh how much does that weigh compared to your cat how many pounds is that 12 pounds what does a bowling ball weigh there's a whole different weights babe. aren't they pretty heavy though yeah this is more than Eight one 10 pounds this is way more than that probably 18 pounds feel this wow. maybe 20 I believe it. No, feel it. I believe it. Okay, fine. Okay. I feel like it's 20. Right, well, I think we are getting close to being done. We're going to be saving some of these bones for bone broth. And we ended up with like a five gallon bucket of roasts and steaks. Actually, it's over that. And then same thing with the ground meat. We ended up with all of that. It's a lot of meat. Yeah, that's going to have to be for the dogs that dropped it. Oh, no. Anyway, sad. It's the dog's lucky day. See, look at this poor little sad thing. Do you think I should do what? To make. <clears throat> they take an arrowhead and fasten it to the end of a stick with those, and they put it on raw. And as it dried, it shrunk down and tightened up. See how that's real hard and tight? Yeah. And it used to like secure arrowhead on the end of a stick. That's like the toughest thing in the world. I don't even know if I can get through that with this knife. Yeah, you know they used to mean? use like tendons from like bison and whatever they call How do you right? know this? My mom's part Indian. Switch to my little tiny knife doing some little detail work here. Uh, I wanted to keep this scapula to do um, some moose calling with it. We have some, but I'd like another one. This is where it got shot. There's supposed to be bone there, and this thing just got just really messed up. I'm not going to be saving that. A lot of this meat, where it gets shot, gets kind of like bloody, so that's going to be dog food. This is awesome for the bone or, broth. Or chicken food. But yeah, this right here, the knuckles, those are going to be great. We're almost done. Chicken food, right? Look at that. Man, they're going to be crazy. The dog's trying for a couple hours, right? Yeah. Kind of That's what I was thinking, yeah. Okay. They love the heart, huh? Oh my gosh. That's way heavier than it looks. 70 pounds? No, that's not the same as concrete. Concrete's 80. Okay, yeah, it's under concrete. It's, it's not probably, like 60. I was gonna say 60. It's 50 or 60. It's heavy. It is heavy. These are all of our moose roast. I don't know, this has to be 50 to 60 pounds, I'm guessing. So Ariel went along outside, she cut them into big pieces 
in here. I'm going to clean them up a little bit, cut them into more manageable pieces that we'll want to cook, probably about that big. Roasts are probably our favorite way to eat moose. Probably like them even better than steaks, so we got a lot of them to work with. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Flat steak. Yeah, we can do that. I'm just gonna clean it up there. Thanks. Beautiful. I'm gonna show you everyone. Look at all of them. I have like a cross section of a different kind of yeah. muscle group. This is the one that I didn't separate. It's okay. Tell me that's not more than 20 pounds. Touch it. Touch it. That. That's, that's what I was trying to say. It's over. Freaking beast. It's over 18 pounds, or it's 18 pounds or more. Oh right? my gosh. Hey, use that on a knife, no? See, it just does it on its own like that. Oh, you know, this little lady doesn't know what's going on half the time. <laughs> I was like, oh, cool, I figured out how to use this thing. <laughs> Last four packages. Oh, I, I don't even know how much we have here, but Errol's gonna get her little scale out and she's actually gonna weigh all this. See how we did. And then next up, we're gonna head back outside. We're gonna grab our bones. We're gonna start making our bone broth. trying something new we're going to be roasting our bones or browning them before we make broth thanks to a few of you leaving me a tip that sounds wonderful it sounds like it will make for a much you know even more developed flavor of a broth so I'm gonna get these in the oven I have to do probably two or three batches and then we'll get started on the bone broth Well, those look absolutely delicious. So we're gonna add them into our pot. In fact, I already added the other batch. Those are already browned. And Eric filled this up with water about two thirds of the way. This is our pressure canner. We're going to be pressure cooking these bones in our pressure canner because these bones are so big and they take a really long time to break down. We want the bone marrow to break down, the collagen to come out. I left a lot of the cartilage and tendons and all that good stuff. I'm even putting in the kneecap too. In the past we've cooked these in a pot, but they take like two days to break down. Two days or more continuously running your range. So this way is like an expedited version and it works a lot quicker. And once I get these in, I'm gonna be also adding some onions. I'm just gonna add them in and a tomato because it is acidic. This is a really beautiful tomato known as Moonglow. So we're just gonna add her in. Once I get all of these in, we're gonna start cooking this and let it go probably for about two hours tonight and then we're gonna pick back up tomorrow morning.
All right, time for breakfast. We got a late start today. So it's like almost noon, but we stayed up till two in the morning last night doing a bunch of stuff, but we're continuing on with the moose and we're eating the moose bone marrow this morning. These are little chunks I cut out last night and we cooked them in the oven at 400 for about like 30 minutes. I got a couple eggs frying, we got some bread and we're gonna eat and see how it tastes. Pretty excited to try this bone marrow since we've never had it. It looks, what does it look like to you? I, the best thing I can say it looks like is if you cook a meatloaf, like the extra meat juices that are there on the side of the meatloaf. <laughs> I don't know. It smells like moose, but let's, let's give it a try. I'm gonna try and never, oh, whoa. It's, it's hot, it's soft. Oh, it's super soft. Yeah, it is, and there's probably some bone in there. How do you, wait, the fork, the fork's not working. It's, it looks like just fat or something. Well, it's just the stuff inside of bone. It just tastes like a, it doesn't taste like much, it's just more just oily. We have some fermented cabbage that we made. It has carrots, onions, oregano, and thyme. I think it is called cortito. It is, I really liked it with that. It's like sauerkraut, but just like kicked up a notch. It's yeah. so good. It doesn't have much flavor, the bone marrow. I agree, that's why I paired it with that. It's like just, just oily richness. Oily. I, I mean, know. yeah, you get some bone in there. I know we gotta watch out for the bone. Now, normally we just make the bone broth, but I wanted to try roasting the bones for the bone broth, and I saw that a lot of people eat bone marrow like this, so I figured it was worth trying. It is good. It's beautiful. Look at it. It's quite tasty. Look at the oil dripping off there. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. That's it. So on to the agenda today. We're picking back up with the moose. We're gonna grind our meat for burger and sausage. And first, we're gonna finish up on the bone broth. There's a little bit more. Have some mine. That's just like so... Nature again. Yes! I think the roof... I think brownie it really added another flavor to it too. He's gonna lick that thing clean for us. Where's my little blade? It's sharp. Man, run Let's you through the grind, that little girl. What a gorgeous little blade. charges like every day. It's crazy. From full charges and the frozen. Yeah. That really is actually like... Now if we just make that year round... Is that it? That's it? Dang. 
Well, that is it. We have a whole five gallon bucket and probably got like another three gallons right here. So we got a ton of meat. One trick we do when we grind our meat, we always like the meat almost completely frozen. So this meat has been outside. It's like the perfect temperature this time of year. It's getting above freezing during the day, just a little bit, but at night it's down in like the 20s. So our meat was just almost frozen, went right through our grinder. We're gonna be making three things today. We're gonna make burger meat, which is just a uh, ground moose meat. We're not gonna add anything to it. We grind it through the coarse. We're gonna grind it through the fine. That'll be the burger meat. We're gonna do a sweet sausage, which we're gonna grind through again. We're gonna add some sweet seasonings. And then we're gonna try a new one. It's gonna be almost like a chorizo. That one we're gonna do some spices and we're also gonna cut in some pork fat. <laughs> surrender. Sorry. Well, we got another bucket right here. Let's clean that one out. We can just put it in thirds. Well, our grinding came to a halt. Our machine got a little too warm and I guess some of that meat was starting to warm up surprisingly, even though it was outside. So we're going to switch gears and package that ground burger meat that we processed and get that put away first. You ask and you shall receive. Thank you, baby. Oh! See, so it ground through that one great. I know, it's, it was, that meat was colder, I think, at the bottom of that batch. Little hands coming handy for something, huh? I know. Whoa, your energy came back? <laughs> you, I'm so retired, but no, that's how you did it. You're spinning them like that. Yeah, but you did it with some major pizzazz. Cause we're a team. We don't. We don't. What's it called? You don't leave another man hanging. Yeah. You don't know man. Don't left, leave another man behind. No, no man left behind. Damn, you said it right there. Did you coin that? I made that term. <laughs> I made that term. You're always coining <laughs> phrases. You know what I mean? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, Eric. That's another saying. That I can't, that's another saying. I made. Got all kinds of sayings going on today. We're scraping the fat off of our bone broth that I had outside chilling and there's a lot of it. <laughs> this is just too much to can in my opinion. Uh, we've done it that way and it just ends up being like a real greasy oily bone broth. So we usually leave a little bit but not quite this much. Last year we were able to get a lot of fat off of the cow we harvested and I still have a few jars left of that which is awesome. This year because of the circumstances we did not really get that much tallow, which is okay. I'm gonna get this heated up and we're going to be canning it. You know what this reminds me of? The Miss Doubtfire scene? Oh, when he which put the, the cake on his... Yeah. What do Whoa! You... What does it smell like? Do you good? smell that? Well, it should smell good. Like what? Just like baby food butter fat. Like a really good barbecue joint or something. Hey, you know what I can make out of that? It feels like it's a lotion. Like a mixed bird seed in there. You could make some little bird treats. Little suet box. I have always wanted to do that. All right, I think these are ready to go in our pressure canner. I think we're gonna have about 10 quarts, so we're gonna run two different pressure canners. I have one heating up in the back. I want the water warm because these are so hot. I don't want to shock them. And it smells delicious. I think roasting it really made a difference this time around, roasting those bones. It has a just a different flavor. I honestly can't even put it into words. Every time there's a struggle. Okay. 
Okay, we've got both pressure canners going. I have the back one that vented for 10 minutes and I put our weight on. We're gonna pressure can them for 25 minutes at 11 pounds. We ended up with 10 quarts. And I just wanna show you what last year's bone broth looked like. It's really pretty. It's a little more translucent. I'm guessing that's because we did not roast the bones. And you can see there's a thick layer of fat. These are the ones that we left the fat on. We decided that we don't wanna do that again. And it is quite gelatinous. It's hard to tell, but it's nice and thick with all the collagen. And this is what the tallow looked like from last year. So once it's rendered and you get rid of all the water, this is what it looks like. It's actually quite like a pure cotton white color. back at it with our grinding and we let this meat sit outside overnight it was just getting a little too warm and our little grinder wasn't having it but it cooled down it's not frozen but it's really cold it's going through no problem we're going to finish up on this one which is our sweet sausage and then we'll work on our chorizo way better still not 100 percent but way better man this grinder only uses about 100 watts isn't that crazy i'm sure when it starts up it uses a lot more but For the sweet sausage we're adding about two cups of brown sugar and we have an herb mixture of fennel sage celery leaves coriander rosemary and thyme and we've got some really good vermont maple syrup we've been mm -hmm. saving this for this recipe so we're gonna put what maybe a cup in there i was thinking more than that like two cups okay let's... you have to put a lot of sugar in order for it to, to be sweet when you cook it i think all right, we should probably cook one of these before we do anything, right? What do you think? Make sure it's to our liking. Whenever you're ready. It's not done yet, I know. <laughs> I think it looks good. Let's give these a try. They smell so good. And from the mousse that we've processed, we've kind of decided that we don't we don't think it's necessary to cut the moose meat with any sort of fat, like pork fat. So this is just straight moose meat. The burger is just straight moose meat. It's delicious that way. And the chorizo, that's more of a fatty sausage. So when we get to making that one, we are going to grind some pork fat in there. But let's try this. See how it is. Oh, yeah. Probably no more herbs. Let's put a little salt in there and mix it up and put it outside. All right, one. Have a big, pretty big head. Yeah, I can eat two heads. oregano into this mix and then we're adding a whole bunch of herbs salt pepper red pepper flakes paprika is like an essential one for chorizo in fact i think it's smoked paprika we have some cayenne i added i skipped the coriander because we had coriander in the last one and then we have cumin ancho powder and then some ground cloves and cinnamon so it should be pretty spicy we need a few splashes of vinegar maybe less than a quarter cup so this is not traditional chorizo because it's going to be loose and we're just going to be storing it like that, just ground, ground, ground sausage. sausage. We call it sausage, but it's actually just ground meat that we are freezing. Over the years, we've processed a lot of meat and I don't know what it is, but we're not really a huge fan of just frozen sausage if it hasn't been cured or smoked. Sausage links? Yeah, just sausage links yeah. in the freezer. So we're not going to be doing that again. We like it a lot like this in the future. If we have a better environment, we may try to cure or smoke some of our own, but 
which is not really realistic with what we got going on in here. I we mean, need to taste test that. I got the panel. Prices. Whoa, that smells good. It smells like, uh, really you can smell the cloves, the spice. Wow. You go first, baby. Yeah, that's too big a bite. You're gonna burn yourself. Not too hot. I'm getting a flavor right away. Is it cumin? No, I think it's ancho. I believe that's ancho powder. Hey, that's really good. Mm -hmm. It's not like crazy, like Agreed. so much flavor, like too much. But it tastes like a really good mild, mild chorizo. Mm -hmm. We nailed it. This chorizo sausage is awesome. So we're all done processing that mousse we got. We ground everything we need to grind. We got the roast in the freezer. We need to package these up. We've got quite a bit of work to do there, but we're not done yet because we're going to head outside and we're making chili. Plus, when you use that frozen pork fat, it just cleans it out. You just yes. do it every once in a while, and it's like perfect. I mean, where would the world be without spices and cloves? Herbs? Cinnamon. Yeah, it's all coming through. The final tally is in between the ground meat, the sausage, and the roast. We ended up with 90 pounds of moose meat, which is awesome. We're going to get this all in the freezer. cooking moose chili. We're going to do a huge batch. We're not going to be using the moose that we just processed. We have about 20 pounds of ground moose meat left over from last year. So we're going to make some room in the freezer, which we really need. I got it all thawed out in the ice chest. We're going to get to cooking that soon. We've got a bunch of onions in here, garlic, celery act. We're going to saute these down. In this pot, we have another batch of bone broth. Uh, Ariel took the bones and she reprocessed them into another batch of bone broth. So we're going to be cooking our beans in this one. And our beans, we started these yesterday. We soaked them in water and apple cider vinegar. We did that for about 18 hours. We have about five pounds of beans here. We got black beans, pinto beans, red beans, and kidney beans. Chili is one of those things you can do pretty much whatever you want in there. I just added some frozen celery. We're gonna do some frozen uh, hot peppers. Put a few of those in there to get some heat. We're also gonna do a couple jars of our salsa that we made. That's the green salsa. Uh, our tomato sauce is not ready yet, so we bought a big can of tomato sauce, tomato paste. We're gonna do a bunch of spices. We've got some tomatoes and some carrots we're gonna put in there. have tomato sauce we haven't made it yet we have some really nice tomatoes that have ripened inside We've got orange ones too you wouldn't eat a tomato sandwich pesto tomato on bread dipped in tomato soup is that too much grilled cheese pesto These ones are super like, gushy. Right? 
We're using our, I think it's a 21 quart pot. I'm hoping all this chili is going to fit in here, but I don't know. It's a lot of stuff, but we're going to add all of our tomatoes and our carrots in here. Oh my gosh, it smells good. The beans are getting close to being done, so we are going to add pretty much all the rest of our ingredients. And we're going to be putting some of our leftover cowboy candy marinated in there, and that's just sugar vinegar cooked with jalapenos. And Ariel also made some uh, chow chow the other day, and she had some leftover brine, so this is just vinegar and sugar and some spices. Some of that in there. We had to split up the moose meat because it was just too much for this one cast iron pot. And it smells awesome. I don't quite know how to describe it, but it just smells like really good browned meat. And moose meat, to me and Eric, I mean, it's really, it's an incredible flavor. It tastes, I want to say it tastes just like cow, but better. But it does taste a lot like, like a grass-fed cow. It tastes very similar to that. Oh my gosh. Well, it's time to combine this chili. Took a while to cook 20 pounds of moose meat. So we have some of it there. We've got a big pot of it over there. I think what I'm gonna do is try to take some of this chili here or the tomato sauce soup mixture, add it to that meat. So that'll be a finished product. I'm gonna take that meat and add it to this big batch. To get some of these beans stirred up in here. Can I ask you a question? Are there enough beans in here? Well, I'm getting beans. I can feel them and I can see them. Whoa, do you know what that is? Mm -hmm. The color is phenomenal. Okay, right, let me add some meat to this one. All of it. Oh no, I thought you were gonna do more beans. Uh, I don't know. I, I gotta check if that one has how many beans that one has. You ever had gray moose meat? No. This is special for you. Oh my gosh, tell me this doesn't look good. Yes, the meat. Oh, it's gonna be a meaty chili. There's gonna be so much meat in here. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of beans. It should be a good ratio. Let me try it though. This is perfect. Oh my god, it's spicy. Yeah, I had a feeling it was going to be spicy. It's so it's good, it warms you up, and it's so cold out here. Dang. Well, this looks fantastic. We're going to let it cook for probably like 40 minutes or so, and then we're going to head inside. We're going to be canning a lot of this chili, or all of it. It's going to take forever, and of course, we're going to eat some with some cornbread tonight. It's the colors. It's like a rainbow of chili. But the, the colors, the flavors. Oh. You're not really impressed with the color. Oh, it has super. so much flavor. I think my most favorite part is the big chunks of tomato. That's hot. Scary stuff is already hot. Here's the other one. This is legitimately five gallons of chili. I know. <laughs> like a nice jalapeno on the top. Yeah, I would say jalapeno and garlic. A whole tomato. Oh, there you go. First round of chili, I guess second batch, first round, is going into the pressure canner. And we're going to have to probably do two rounds. And we're going to eat because we're very hungry. Very excited to try this chili. We have some cornbread that I think is done. Some cornbread muffins coming out. This looks so good. We haven't eaten today. <laughs> Did we eat today? We ate breakfast. We ate sausage patties. We ate sausage patties for breakfast. That was it. We didn't eat lunch and it's like six o'clock at night right now. I'm so hungry, and this chili never looks so good. Let's get that cornbread out of the oven. That's really good chili. <laughs> I was about to say, it's no surprise to me that it's really good chili. Really, it's really good. good chili. 
Oh gosh. I think I like, I think we both kind of like all the different chunks. Mm. Maybe that's common for chili, but there's like all these different, like you've got mm. full, on, oh, full yeah. on tomatoes. Carrots, the peppers. We we make chili all the time. We've been making chili for years. We've never canned it. This is awesome. It's going to be great to have. I think for us, it sounds weird, but we're really into convenience foods. And we make a lot of our meals, but to have like a canned meal mm -hmm. is so, I can't even like put it, it's just, it's incredible because there's times where you're just really busy and you come in and you want good food, food yep. or a meal and you just have to dump this into a pot and oh, yeah. eat up on the wood stove and you're good to go. Snow machine trips, road trips, this stuff's going to be great. This moose just really went a long way for us. We got 90 pounds of pure moose meat which is great, it's gonna last us a long time. The dogs, they got a bunch of the scrap meat. The chickens, they're still working on the bones and some moose meat in there, so everyone's happy around here. Totally, and here we have found, I guess this is true everywhere, it's never for granted that you can, you know, for sure go out and hunt a moose or receive a moose from this or even go out and get a fish and you're, you know, gonna get a fish. So it's really just something that we try to like be appreciative of. I'm oh, yeah. super stoked for this winter. We have like this total array and assortment of food. Yeah. It's going to be good in the food department. Yes, it was a total shock and surprise to get this moose. Just super grateful for it. We got a lot more work to do tonight. Like Errol said, I think we got four batches to do. So we're going to stay busy. We're going to eat our meal and we hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> <laughs> really, though, this is good. <laughs> You like chili cat? No. <laughs> <laughs>